I recall it was a glorious sunny day in May 2018 when I was driving over to the Lake District and met up with fellow photographer Adam Gibbs, who was visiting the UK from his hometown on Vancouver Island. And he, he kind of lived up to his nickname of Uncle Grumpy, but I think he was just a bit, a bit jet lagged and had lost his wallet. But no, no, it was, it was good fun. And we enjoyed a, a bit of a yomp at one of the Cumbrian fells in the evening. Um, but I think I first saw Adam's name when he commented on some of my videos on my channel and then I realised that he'd started his own videos not long after I started and we just connected in early 2018 and have followed each other since. And I certainly have enjoyed admiring his work, not least because he shares my affinity for trees. Um, but I've often found myself quite envious of his local landscape and the copious amounts of moss. But I think he's equally quite envious of some of the quaint character for local woodlands that we've got here in the UK. Either way, we both love exploring and appreciating what we've got local to us. Um, so it's very nice to have Adam contribute to this series. So here he is talking about some of his own photographs and the stories behind them. Well, thank you ever so much, Simon, for inviting me over to your channel and also uh, the opportunity to talk a little bit about my photography. I did have a, a hard time uh, choosing an image to talk about because after 20 odd years, I have quite a number of images that I really like, but not necessarily a story behind them. And then there's others that they have a story behind them, uh, but they might not be the greatest of images. Now this image here, I have talked about quite a bit in the past to uh, camera clubs, conferences, and also on my own uh, YouTube channel. But the reason why I keep coming back to this photograph is because it was kind of a light bulb moment for me at the very beginning of my photographic career. So I'll just give you a little bit of a background story to this and then I'll tell you why it's important to me. So back in the early 90s, uh, I was living in a townhouse complex just outside of Vancouver. It's a suburb called Burnaby. It's your usual suburb. Uh, it's, it's not a bad place to raise kids. It's, it's, you know, it's not a bad place to live at all. The problem is there's not an awful lot of wilderness or nature in that area other than, than the odd park. Now, where we lived, uh, there was a, a bit of a buffer zone between the house and the main highway. Uh, it was about a kilometer wide, and it was just uh, an old wood lot. No old growth trees, just your standard conifers, and nothing terribly interesting in there. Uh, I was out actually taking the dog for a walk uh, one late afternoon, and it was pouring with rain, and as I started heading home, the light started to get really nice. So I dropped the dog off, grabbed my camera gear, and headed into the woods behind my house. Wandered around for quite some time until the light or the sun started to, to set. And there just happened to be a clearing in the west. And I got closer and closer to the highway. So we had this woodland, and then we had, well, after that, it's just buildings and highway, and then the sun setting. So, of course, because it had been raining all day, there was all this mist coming up from the, the forest floor. And then we had this beautiful light coming in on the side of the forest. And this image was the result of that. Now, at the time, I was using film. Uh, I shot this with uh, Fujichrome Velvia, uh, which is an E6 film, slide film. Uh, at, at that time, it was a very saturated film. I was used to using, I think it was a Nikon F4 camera and a 200 millimeter macro lens, believe it or not. So I took a couple of images and thought nothing else of it, uh, sent the film off, and a couple of days later, I got these images back. And I only managed to take two images before the light was gone. And when I looked at the photographs, I was just absolutely blown away by the quality of light. Now, I had studied photography uh, in college for a couple of years, and, uh, I, you know, I was always told how important light was, but it's not until you actually see the light, so to speak, that uh, you realize, oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so it, it is actually the light that makes the photograph. If I went back to this area, and I did actually go back to this area uh, quite a few times after I took this, the light never happened again. 
and the woodland just didn't look that interesting. So it definitely was all about the light. I entered this image into a contest uh, back then and I actually won uh, the grand prize. But the problem with this photograph was it was just dumb luck. Uh, I didn't know really what I was doing uh, in terms of looking for light. Uh, I, I didn't really have uh, a concept of, of where I wanted to take my photography and uh, how important light actually was. So after I'd won the contest, I started to study this photograph in great detail and tried to figure out what it was that made this image more successful than images that I'd taken in the past. Now, obviously the light is very important, but, what, but why is it important? And, and what is it about the light that makes it so much more interesting than the image that I'd taken before? The obvious one to me at the time was the contrast in color and the quality of light. So first of all, the contrast in color, we have warm tones set up against cooler tones. But I didn't actually see that at the time. All I saw were these light beams coming in th through the woodland. So the warm tones, anything where you're taking an image with warm tones tends to uh, come forward, but anything with cool tones tends to recede. So as I'm looking at this photograph, I'm looking at the leaves surrounding the, uh, the beams of light, and I realize that even though they're green, they're not actually green, they're more of a cyan green that have a much cooler tone. And the reason being is that they're actually in shadow. So above me or behind me, there's a little bit of blue sky, and that's reflecting ambient light on those leaves, and that's where that blueness comes from, whereas the warm light is direct sunlight. So not only did I realize how important light was, but also the contrast in light and contrast in color, and also contrast in shape. And these things have kind of evolved over the years, and I, these are the things that I've, I look for constantly. I'm always looking for this type of light, contrast in color, contrast in ambient light with direct sunlight, and also the contrast of different shapes, say, a round boulder with a triangular shape or, or something like that. So rather than looking at a, a composition in front of me in terms of the subject matter itself, I try to look at things as, as shapes, contrast in color, uh, and so on. So with that in mind, I started to go out on trips and look for uh, subjects in contrast in color. And I really noticed a huge improvement uh, in my photography as I started to look for more specific things other than just the subject matter itself. Okay, so now fast forward several years and I find myself in an area called the Alpine Lakes area. Uh, more specifically, this is called the Enchantments and it's an absolutely spectacular area. It's uh, white granite peaks with all these hundreds of little tarns and lakes surrounded by these large trees that turn a beautiful golden color in the autumn. The problem with the enchantments is, first of all, it's on a lottery system, so it's hard to get into. You have to apply, and if you don't get in, then you can't hike in and you can't camp there. The other problem is, is that it's grueling getting in there. Uh, it's a good 24 kilometers, and it's around 22, 2300 meter uh, elevation gain. So it's, it's a rough, day or two to get in there. Now on this particular occasion, I actually carried in uh, a week's worth of uh, camping gear, food, and also uh, my 4x5 camera. So I was carrying a lot of weight. Uh, but it's a great area to find this type of contrast in color. Now this image has always been one of my favorites because not only does it kind of represent my search for unusual light, but I took this actually at one o'clock in the afternoon on a bright sunny day, which is just not your usual time to look for great light uh, for photography. And the way it came about was it was quite interesting. I hiked up to this area, which is pretty much the highest point in the enchantments other than climbing the surrounding peaks. And I saw this beautiful situation where there was this one little golden larch on the side of a cliff and 
the cliff was in the shade. So the cliff was very blue, catching ambient light from the blue sky, but it was backlit, the large, so it has this beautiful golden backlighting on it. And I got my four by five out, started setting up the image, just about to take the shot and the light was gone. And I didn't get the photograph and I was so disappointed. So I ended up going over to this tree as kind of a like, well, I'll just take a shot at this tree instead. And it, it's turned out to be one of my all time favorite images. I just absolutely love the light in this. The blue in the background, again, is from ambient light hitting that lake behind and, and the white granite cliffs. The golden larch in the foreground is, is light in front of me, backlighting this tree, and I'm shooting into the sun towards uh, this tree. And I've cropped it so that all you're getting is just part of the tree. You're just getting those golden uh, needles set up against the, uh, the blue background. And it's a simple, simple composition, but it's extremely effective. The funny thing about this story is that I actually went in the year after this and I returned to this very spot at 1 p.m. on a bright sunny day and I took the shot of the other tree that I was after. And this is it here. And to be honest with you, I prefer uh, the other one. <laughs> so go figure. In a nutshell, these two images really represent uh, what it is about photography that I love and that's searching for quality light. Now, obviously, since I've taken these images, I look for other types of light. And in many ways, my photography has toned down quite a bit from those days when I was looking for really vibrant colors. But that's just how you evolve as a photographer and as an artist, you just continually looking for different things to photograph in different ways and and your your style kind of changes over time but these do really represent my kind of love affair with looking for light and and looking for nuances in light and even today i'm always attempting to look for new ways of looking at things and discovering new types of light to photograph anyway those are my stories i hope you enjoyed my little uh explanation of why I have this fascination with light and uh, I wish you guys all the best in your own photography. All right, thanks ever so much. Thank you very much, Adam. It's very interesting listening to Adam's journey and his thoughts on light. And we had a very similar conversation over lunch in the Lake District and it became quite apparent just how different our journeys have been. See, my process and priority has always been composition first and seeing light as a component of composition and then the sum of all the parts determining the success of a photograph. But that's perhaps a dip, deeper conversation to have on another day. I really enjoyed Adam's examples and his use of light to emphasize that contrast of color that creates this beautiful aesthetic and allows the subject to shine. You know, those lovely warm tones against that cool dark rock is very striking. You know, color contrast is something that I'm often looking for in my local woodland, particularly in autumn time. But I have to say the message from Adam that I can really relate to and personally find quite crucial is when he talked about not looking at a scene purely as physical subjects in the composition, but as a harmony of shape, color and light. Well, he perhaps didn't use those exact words, but words to that effect. And that's an idea or methodology, if you like, that I use when I talk about going into the woods and not looking for trees. It's just a way of looking that allows you to see things a little bit differently. Another good takeaway from Adam's presentation, I think, is how he took the time to really study that first image, to understand its merits, and in doing so, it informed his intent moving forward, with great results, I might add. But that time of reflection is essentially what I've wanted to encourage with this video series. But that's it for this episode. Thanks again to Adam for his contribution. I'll be back again soon. Uh, with just a bit of a break from this series to give you something different, but then I do have more guest photographers on board to share some of their stories. But thanks again for watching this episode, and as always, I hope to see you for the next one.